Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, man, look. Malik Scott. Something, something doesn't sit right with me when it comes to Malik Scott. Now, I can't quite put my finger on it. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't think Malik Scott was knocked out against Derek Chisora. And I don't think he was knocked out against Deontay Wilder. I'm going to be honest with you. Now, you probably say, damn, man, uh, hood champion, why would you come out and say that? You know, Deontay Wilder is you know, one of your favorite fighters. Now, Deontay Wilder is one of my favorite fighters. Uh, now, for the handful of people out there who think that I'm saying that because uh, Deontay Wilder is black, you know, let me, let me explain something to you. That's not why I like fighters. Because they're white or because they're biracial, like myself, or because they come from, you know, similar culture or whatever, right? I like Deontay Wilder uh, for something else that... Um, just really hits home with me is his reason for getting into boxing and the way he feels about his children. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. It's, it's how that man talks about his children and children as a whole. I respect that. So that's why I like Deontay Water. He's not my favorite fighter, but I like him. But the video is not about Deontay Water. It's about Malik Scott. Now Malik Scott went on an interview, and I'm surprised that uh, he was on Talk Sport. And they got that one character on there who wears the glasses. He is hard to deal with. I think his name is Simon or whatever. That guy is no joke, man. But when Malik Scott was doing that in doing that interview a couple of days ago, and I was watching his body language, his nonverbals, I was listening to what he was saying, because the guy was basically telling Malik Scott that Deontay Wilder no doubt has power, he has charisma, but he has no skills. And Malik Scott was trying to sell everyone on how he got knocked out by Deontay Water. And I said, okay, I remember somebody posting something in my comments last year, right? Because I've only had this channel a little over a year now. And they were saying basically that Malik Scott flopped uh, against Deontay Water. Deontay Water didn't even connect with the shot. And I went back and I watched it. And, you know, just that part where he got, where the knock, supposedly knock, knockout happened, where he goes down and he grabbing the rope and falling and he can't get his balance, his equilibrium is all over the place. And and I did say, okay, that looked a little a little funky. But I did I didn't think much of it. But I did say, hmm, didn't really look like he got hit. Like he got hit. Left hook lands. But the right hand, it's like this is the right hand, right? It's coming and it, it more or less goes here. Now, if you look at this top, in the top photo, you can see the right hand is on the outside. It doesn't hit him in the face. It's like on the outside. So the right hand didn't land. It deflected off his glove and went on the side of his face. So my question is, did Deontay Water really knock him out? So then I said, okay, let me take a look at his uh, record, right? Let me look at his record and see who Malik Scott fought. I said, cause I think I think I owe that to myself. Now let me uh let me pull this up. Okay, so while that's pulling up, I'm going to let me make sure I can pull up that screen real quick. Is it right here? Okay. Let me uh let me pull this up for you. All right. We're gonna we're gonna look at something. I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, where is it? Right here. Okay. So now this is Malik Scott. 38 wins, 13 of those wins by KO, three losses, two by KO. So I started going through and taking a look, right? He's 6'5", 81 inch reach. He had a 34% KO ratio. But when I started to go down and to, to understand his three losses, I saw that he had a loss against Derek Chisor, Deontay Wilder, and Luis Ortiz, right? And I said, damn, he lost against Derek Chisor. So I went back and watched the Derek Chisor fight. And let, let me tell you something. Derek Chisor didn't hit him in that fight either. Derek Chisor came with like an overhand shot, no real power. 
and he didn't, that, that shot didn't land. And I said, damn, Malik Scott flopped the Derek Chisora fight too. Now I know some people are gonna say, well, you get in the ring and get hit by him and see what happens. Look, let's not take it to the stupid, okay? It ain't about me, it ain't about you. We're talking about Malik Scott. But the question is, why would a guy like Malik Scott, okay, um, be okay with flopping in the boxing ring? That, that, that's my question. Now, he started boxing in, um, in, in, in 2000. He fought from 2000 to 2016. That's a long career. Uh, and and he made some noise. He he. If you watch Malik Scott, he can see. And when he was fighting, you can see he was a good fighter, man. You know, uh, he he had he had something. But I just really feel that maybe there's so, something more to him. You know what I mean? And when I watched those fights where he flopped, I think he flopped in Derek Chisora. I don't know why, but I know he was sparring partners with a lot of those guys in the UK at the time. And and I'm not I'm not so sure. I just can't understand why he would do it. But you look at the Deontay Water fight. This is what kind of shocks me. Two hours after he and Deontay Water fought, Deontay Water hit him up and said, "Hey, you're gonna be my head trainer." Now I know they've had a good relationship, um, but does that not seem odd to you? You. Just knocked someone out, supposedly, right? Because I'm telling you, that shot didn't land. The left hook landed, but that didn't do any damage. And it wasn't even a solid left hook. But then to what he hits hard. The right hand he throws, it doesn't even it doesn't even hit Malik Scott. It goes off of his glove and it goes on the side. It doesn't even hit him. So he flopped. I'm telling you, I think he flopped. But what would make someone, even though you're the best of friends, brothers, or whatever the hell relationship they have, right? What would make you... Call him two hours after you knock him out and say, hey, you're going to be my head trainer. And then I watched Malik Scott. When he gets an he had an opportunity to talk about Mark Breland. And he, he was very careful with his words. But I'm just surprised that he didn't give Mark Breland, he didn't really praise him. You know, he more talked about Mark Breland was, was a great uh, amateur fighter. And he said, as a professional, he was a champion, but he was saying there's certain things he ne he never saw him do with Deontay Wilder, uh, and didn't recognize Deontay Wilder as a guy. You can show him a million different things, that doesn't mean he can pick up and retain all of what you taught him. He's a guy where you gotta drill over the same thing over and over and over until he perfects it, and those are the things you need him to do in the ring. And I didn't quite disagree with that, but I, w I was surprised that he didn't give Mark Breland more praise because Deontay Wilder's success, right up to Tyson Fury, right, had a lot to do, I think, with Mark Breland. He gave J.D. his credit for, for getting Deontay Wilder to where he is. I think it was a team effort, but I definitely watched Deontay Wilder's style, the jab, uh, you know, controlling the distance and bringing that big right hand, you know, out of nowhere, that was Mark Breland. Deontay Wilder fought very similar to Mark Breland with the basic jab in the right hand. Mark Breland had a few more layers to him, but he basically had Deontay Wilder keeping it simple in the ring and getting people out of it with the big right hand. And my thing is this. What... What more has Malik Scott done for Deontay Wilder to make him so much better than what he was when he was under Breland? We don't know. You know why? Because when he was under Breland and Diaz, he got in the ring with Tyson Fury in that first fight, and he, he knocked him out cold uh, and put him down. He put him down once and knocked him out cold. Right? Simple. Doesn't matter who you think won that fight. The bottom line is Wilder under Breland and Diaz, not very out cold. Second fight, some things didn't, you know, it just didn't work out for Wilder. Doesn't matter what you believe, I believe, what the rumors are, Kinaha, the secret society. Doesn't matter. We ain't going to talk about that. But bottom line is Mark Breland threw that towel in. 
which I think Mark I think Mark Berlin, uh did the right thing because that wasn't going to get any better what Deontay Wilder was going through, even though we know the power he has. And then you look at what happened in that third fight. Breland wasn't there. Uh, Wilder was going to the body. Uh, he, 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 he had a, made Tyson Fury think a little bit in the first round. Wilder was able to get off a big right hand, did no damage to Fury, but he was able to get Fury to think about the body shots and Wilder was able to come up top. That's Malik Scott, okay? But after that, it was basically Wilder, same old Wilder, uh, one, two, one, two. And he had success with the right hand several times throughout that fight in the third fight. And he almost had Tyson Fury out of there. He just didn't have the, the energy and he didn't have the, uh, the, the, the the right form on his shots to really get the leverage he needed and to, to get Fury, put Fury out of his misery. Because when Wilder hurt him the first time, Wilder, you know, was kind of throwing wild punches. You know, his footwork's all over the place and everything. But he's an orthodox, and, you know, it is what it is. I'm not slamming him for that. What I'm telling you is he looked just like he's always looked, like when he was under Mark Breland. And I'm going to tell you, I don't have a trained eye like some top-notch trainer, but I don't have an untrained eye because I boxed. And, and I'm watching Deontay Wilder. I'm looking for the feints. I'm looking for you throwing a, a basically what I call just like, you know, a giveaway a hook, giveaway jab, just to come back and blind him with a big right hand or, you know, throwing the right hand as a shot just to kind of distract him to come with a big hook uppercut or something. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I understand. You know, moving him a certain direction. I, I understand all that, stepping into him, coming back out, bumping him, maybe not even throwing a shot just to put that mental pressure on him. I, I understand. I did enough to, to understand what I'm seeing in that ring. So I'm not, I'm not here saying Malik Scott's a horrible trainer. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I, I haven't really seen anything from Deontay Wilder to tell me that Malik Scott has really evolved him. And the reason for that is because, one, he fought Tyson Fury, and two, he fought Hellenius, and that fight was one round. Okay? But it comes back to what, what is Malik Scott's story? That, that, that's my thing. What's his story? And, 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 and this whole thing about him coming out here and doing interviews, like he's super. Now, I know they got a good relationship, and I, I think that's great. You got to have someone to cheerlead you and, and to try to speak things into existence. But for me, there's a little bit more to this Malik Scott character. Because, in my opinion, he's kind of risen from obs obscurity into the limelight, you know, as a result of him being Deontay Wilder's new trainer, uh, Mark Breland uh, being fired, the whole Tyson Fury trilogy, and just everything as a result of something bad resulted in something good for Malik Scott. Especially with him, you look at him taking a loss against Deontay Wilder. And then all of a sudden, Wilder says, hey man, I'm going to reward you. Do y'all understand that? That doesn't make y'all say, why are you reward? Okay, you just want to knock this guy out, but you're going to reward him as your, the position as your head trainer? That don't make you, that don't make, that, that doesn't make y'all stop and say for a second, why? Hey, hey look, I, I don't get it. From, from something bad, I'm going to give you something good. That's like, that's like telling your child. I'm not gonna let you let you drive um, drive the car for prom night, okay? And then that that's something bad for the child. And then the, then when they come home from the prom, you have a brand new damn you know X7 sitting in the driveway for them, saying, "Here you go, I'm gonna reward you with a new car." Yeah, it was bad. I didn't let you you know drive the family car out there, man. We got to, you know. Little Honda Honda Odyssey out there, Honda Pilot. We got a little little BMW Benz out there. We got a nice little car here. I didn't let you take it, but hey, something good's gonna come out of that now. You are home? I know you're mad, but here, boom. Here's a brand new car, X7. That's not gonna make you stop and say, "What the hell is going on here?" Why? 
why, why are you rewarding this, this guy? Now, remember, we have conversations on this channel. So this, this thing about, ah, man, uh, I don't want to hear that ignorant talk about, ah, you just, why right, you got to break down a brother, man? You, come on, man. You got to be, uh, shut up with that nonsense, man. Take that shit to somebody else's channel. I don't, I'm not like that over here. You know I mean, I've been, I, I'm, you know, I'm not cut from that cloth. We talk boxing, right? And no one's off limits. Same way I could talk about Tyson Fury. Same way I could talk about Yusick. I could talk about Zhang. I could talk about Andy Ruiz. I could talk about damn Deontay Walker, Malik Scott, anybody. No boxers off limits, and we're going to have conversations. Have an issue if I'm out here saying disparaging things. I'm just asking a question. Did Deontay Walker really knock out Malik Scott? Well, did Chisora really knock out Malik Scott? Because those punches ain't land. A blind man can see them punches ain't land. And then the, why is it that Malik Scott got rewarded with the position of head trainer after just getting knocked out? How did something good result out of something bad for him? That's all I'm trying to understand. Because it just doesn't make sense. You look at his record, man. Yeah, when you look at his record, why, why, did, why did this guy all of a sudden decide to call it quits? You know, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand that. He, he, he loses to Wilder, look right here. He loses to Wilder, beats Lepai, he beats Tony Thompson. You guys should know these names. Tony Thompson was, was a guy who was out here, you know, giving people some problems. Look at the record, 40 and 5. LePay, 30 and 5. Y'all should know those names if you really follow boxing. Now, I'm not saying Tony Thompson was Lennox Lewis, but what I'm saying is he was out here making a name for himself. So for Malik Scott to just up and retire, why? Loses the water, has two big wins, loses to Lewis Ortiz, which is not a bad thing, and then he just calls it quits. Loses a unanimous decision. I don't know, man. But in that Luis Ortiz fight, Scott was knocked down around four or five uh, and nine. Um, and then there were four other attempts where he was kind of jumping on the canvas that, that didn't count. So all I'm saying is it's interesting to me, the relationship between Malik Scott and Water. But it's even more inter what What really sparked me to go and dig a little deeper was that interview he did um, um, B, um, what is it, B, BT Talk, whatever the hell it's called, Talk Sport, right? Uh, that That's what has me like, you know, let, me, let me understand because I never really dwelled on it, but I was like, why does he get like that over Deontay Walker? Like, you can see, like, he really gets agitated when somebody doesn't praise Deontay Walker, but at the same time, he he's trying to watch what he says. And I'm like, let me look into this. I wish that guy would have pressed him about the knock, the knock out, supposedly, the, at the hands of Derek Chisora, and the knock out at the hands of Deontay Wilder, and play that, play those clips where it looks like the shot, he's the, the knockout shot does not land, but he falls out on the ground like he's knocked out. Look, I'm far from slow, people. All I'm saying is, somebody may have taken it to the stupid. But again, we're just having a conversation. Y'all, if y'all think I'm crazy, go and pull it up and look for yourself. Deontay Wilder, Malik Scott. Look at the knockout. You got the highlights right there on YouTube. It's like a, a, a one minute and 30 second clip. You just scroll on over to like the last 30 seconds of the video and you watch it. And watch the replays. That shot doesn't land. And you watch the Derek Chisora shot. When Derek Chisora comes over the top, loses all the power on the shot. And Malik Scott looking just fine up to that point. Floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. All of a sudden, Malik Scott can't, can't continue. You tell me that something don't, something don't seem a little off. Anyway, his career is going real good now, ain't it? That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, all seven continents. I like Deontay Water. That man, that relationship with them kids, man. I'll always root for Deontay Water. But hey, if I see something... It doesn't pass the sniff test. We're going to have to pull Perea down to where we can 
be comfortable with the scent of the conversation. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans on seven continents. Water didn't knock out Malik Scott, neither did Derek Chisora. I'm in the breeze.